Yeah, we should. We got married in October, eighty eight. After a, a courtship of about six years, we met in nineteen eighty two. So, at that stage, he was into the farm management, and of course, he met up with us and me. And he had a greyhound. He wanted it trained, and we daddy trained it for him. And after that, he never looked back, so to speak. He gave up the farm management, and he came back to Kilkenny and started training for himself. So we got married then in eighty eight. And um, <clears throat> it's just been, that's what we do the whole time. Because we don't, he doesn't play golf, he doesn't, <laughs> the only part, the only diversion he has now lately is the horses, which he, he loves as well. But, um, and the kids, sure, our kids are eat, drink and sleep greyhounds. They don't have any choice. I think the, <laughs> I say to them sometimes, you're born in the wrong house if they start giving out about doing jobs. But um, no, they're great and they have great interest and they're great to handle them and they're great to get the, the dogs love them and the dogs love kids, you know, they, they enjoy playing with them, they let them in and out, turn them in and out every evening, um, weekends, they always go racing. And she look at it, it's a great, great pastime. It's, we're just fortunate that we love what we're doing and it's also our jobs. Um, we're looking forward now to the start of the English Derby. It's a great competition, great competition to be involved in. We've had a couple of close shaves, uh, runner up with Tyra Kieran, Barefoot Bullet was third, Ola Connor was third in it. So, like, I mean, it's one that is missing off the CV. We'd love to put it on it because, like, it's not just like a competition that you're running in Ireland. When you're running in the English Derby, at least I feel it anyway, you feel you're competing for Ireland. You, you, com you feel you're competing for your country as well as, as for your individual and for your own and everything else. So, I mean, it's something we look forward to every year. And we have a nice team of dogs going over. We're bringing over six for this year. Um, they're all able to run. And uh, you never know, with a bit of luck, maybe they'd, they'd give it a bit of a rattle. Um, we're here with the dogs, I'm going to give them a, few, a couple of runs up on the gallop and um, the gallop we use is probably a little bit unusual in that it's, it's three furlongs, it's 700 yards long, but we just call them to a whistle, the dogs on it, they won't um, push themselves too hard, but I like working them at a sort of a lesser rate over a longer distance and that's what works for me. Um, other people like to use a drag and give dogs short, sharp workouts, if we want to do that we bring them to the track and give them a sprint. But I like working dogs over a longer trip, um, you know, maybe at a lesser level. It just gets their lungs developed a bit better, I believe. And um, it works for us um, some nights, some nights it doesn't. But like, no matter what you do with a greyhound, as I say, you'll have your nights that will work right and more nights they won't. But um, we've been using the longer gallop for a good few years and it's quite successful. So we're happy enough to stay using it. The traps in England are different than the Irish traps in that they have a curved box and Ireland are a straight line trap so if you can get a dog to get used to trapping from the curved boxes it'll be a big big help to your ground and if you don't necessarily get used to those curved boxes well you're going to be up against it from there on in because early pace is so vital at Wimbledon you have the long straights, early pace is a necessity over there, it's tight bends, there's not a whole lot of room to manoeuvre on the corner so if you can get out of the box in front lead to the first bend with so many early pace runners in the competition it'll make a big big difference. Also you have the hair going a little bit further past the traps in England than it happens in Ireland so that's also a theory that will have to come into things and there's an awful lot of things the Irish dogs will have to acclimatise with. If they do I think the Irish team going over are definitely going to be big big features and I think every one of the greyhounds over that are being sent over have a, a chance in their own in their own mind there are big differences as well in in that the kenneling the kenneling over there you have to kennel your ground an awful lot longer than you have to kennel over here it's the time differences are big also you have to kennel your dog after the race whereas after your race whereas in Ireland you can leave directly after I think that's a good thing I think you have to test your dog after about 15-20 minutes over there which is a big help because anything that's in the ground system will be in their system after that 15 minutes and then you're taken out and you're done properly so it is there's there's pros and cons of going over and there's an awful lot of things different and it's all about the greyhounds getting used to those different scenarios and if you get one good enough well then you have a chance of winning the competition well i just love this time of year um because this is when we start looking forward to the english derby everything starts you start looking up dates um it's a really exciting time we're very fortunate this year to have six runners going over I mean that's fantastic we've never had anything like that caliber before on paper it looks great that they it's going to suit it's going to suit the majority of them they all have the early pace apart from the pilot but he can come home and he'll pick up a place hopefully if there's any kind of trouble or any kind of crowding but it's just wonderful it's a bit of a headache at the same time there's a lot of you have to have your microchipping done you have to have your fet starts you have to have a lot of i's dotted and t's crossed but 
the, every year we learn we learn more and we have it done more in advance which is great and um it's really exciting you can't, you can't wait for next sunday to come you'll be watching out for all of the journalists the the lads in england with it looking at their twitters and their blogs to see what's the draw see how quickly you can get it and then you're relaying that to the cayman islands to brian and kathleen and they're excited too so Paul Hines in Galway, he's got that to look forward to now. You know, it's just a wonderful, wonderful occasion and um, we can't wait. There's excitement, there's a buzz, you're, you're planning, you're looking forward the whole time and um, it's great, it's, it's infectious. The whole house is, the kids come home, well, when are you off? What's happening next? And now with Kevin, Kevin, even though he's working in Paddy Power, he's now able to work up his days, get a couple of days together and he's, as you know, he's been doing the trials for us, which meant that we were able to stay at home and can keep the thing going here. But um, we're looking forward now to having our spin across the waters, and um, but it's great to have him doing it too. Barefoot All-Star, um, he's coming back from injury. Um, he got injured last year, on his, or early this year in Limerick in a race. And uh, we hope to have him ready. He'll get another trial in Kilkenny on Friday this weekend. Um, he schooled well enough last Saturday night in Shelburne Park. And as I say, he should be ready. It'll, he'll be going into the competition a bit raw, but he did that before when he won the Scottish Derby, so hopefully it'll work for us again. Money Talks is a top-class greyhound at his best. Uh, when he traps, he has brilliant early. He'll get the 5-5, five to five, no problem. He's proved how good he is with a victory there in the first round of the Easter Cup this year over Bally McVick. Um, he was unlucky against Bally McVick in the second round, just got caught at the corner. He's won the Lee Strand uh, in very impressively as a puppy. So he's nice and fresh. Um, we think we'll have him well. His race last week in Wimbledon will have taught him a lot, and he's ready to go. Uh, Priceless Guy um, won in a very impressive fashion, I thought, last Saturday night in Wimbledon, his first race around the track. Ran the track really well, showed what you need in Wimbledon. Um, a lot of early pace, and he was brilliant down the back straight. And um, he's won the Talk Gold Cup for us already this year. He finished off last year just getting pipped in the final of the ledger. So his form is very good in top competition. So he's nice and fresh and ready to start as well. Uh, Priceless Rumble is a young dog with, you know, he's two and a half. I know he's aging up, but he's young in his in maturity. He won well last week in Wimbledon as well. Um, he's still only finding his legs, believe it or not, as a racing greyhound. But he's learning. His heart is in the right place. He's, he's, he's very keen. And um, he took well to Wimbledon now last Saturday night, and you'd never know another bit of improvement that'll put him almost up with the rest of them. Uh, Ringtown Snowy, we're going to run him in it. Um, he's had a lot of racing. He's won the Ladbrook 600. He won the Cesaro, which he did. He did with the Cesaro, which in Mullingar. Um, top class competition dog. Any dog, any competition, if we ran him in, he's got to the final of it. So we'll take a chance on him. Now, I don't want to give him a trial around it because he actually needs a bit of a break. He's after running through two 600 yard competitions, which are tough going. Um, but he's well in himself, nice and fresh. We'll chance it first time around. If we can qualify, he'll know the track better the next time. But he's a very good dog, as I say. He's reached the final of nearly every competition we've run him in. So we'll keep our fingers crossed for him. And finally then, Priceless Pilot. Bit of an enigma, enigma in the sense that he's no early pace, which kind of, you know what I mean, doesn't make sense bringing a dog like that to Wimbledon. But he's an, an unusual type of a dog in that he's, he's very good to pick up dogs during a race and... and he should give us a lot of fun through the event for qualifying and stuff like that. And you never know, if you're not in it, you can't win it. And um, we're going to bring him along for the, for the journey as well. He trialled well last week in it, and um, we'll keep the fingers crossed, but definitely he'll be a late finisher every night. We generally leave on a Thursday evening about, we go out on the ferry at about 9 or 10 o'clock, and the dogs are fine, they're empty, they're fed before they go over, and then they just relax in the van, they're all separated. They have duvets in the in the van. They've air going in, so going over on the ferry is not a big deal. And we go over on Thursday night. You arrive late on a Friday morning, just there in the early hours, and we drive down to Rabs. It takes about four and a half to five hours, but you will be stopping every hour, hour and a half, letting the dogs empty, giving them maybe a, a breakfast or such. And you arrive in Rabs at about half past seven, eight o'clock in the morning. You bring the dogs out. You let them out. Rabs is a big field there. We go out, let the dogs free themselves out, let them have a little bit of a run around, and they love it over there. They go into the kennels. Rabs' kennel set up is second to none. He's more than welcoming. He lets us do anything we want. Want there's no, there's no scenario. There's no set procedure that has to be done. Rab lets us do our own thing. And in fairness, our 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 training ability is the exact same as Rab's. We train the exact same way as him. He takes his dogs out as much as we do. He feeds at the same time as us. So they're very much similar things. So the greyhounds aren't coming out of their own training method in any way, great shape or form. And 
we just the traveling over seems to suit we'll probably travel over and back for the first or second round just so we can use our own gallop here and make the dogs feel home from the third round on fingers crossed if we're still in the competition we'd probably stay in rabs for the duration of the competition from the third round on but i don't think it takes much out of grounds because we we went over on the Thursday evening, we had the Friday to recover. The dogs were in their own scenario. They raced Saturday and they were home here Sunday morning. So it didn't take anything. They're back in the routine Sunday morning. And it doesn't take a whole lot out of the dog. I think it's the right way to do things. However, when you have your two or three runs in a week, it, it, it couldn't be done to travel over and back. So from the third round onwards, you'd be looking to settle in. But I don't think it takes much out of the dogs going over for the first and second round. <laughs>